Uh, I'm going to talk about Fuzzy Find, and my name is Amjit. Uh, this is the part where I'm supposed to do a self-promotion and talk about like how awesome I am and stuff, but I'm trying something different. I want to promote a local nonprofit. There is a nonprofit uh, Montessori school called uh, uh, Whole Child Montessori. It's in Southeast Portland. They're running a fundraiser of this uh, around this time, and uh, they're trying to restore a nature reserve that's nearby, as well as uh, fund a, uh, a child from a uh, family that needs needs uh, uh, some some assistance. So if you are inclined, you're welcome to go to bit.ly slash donate whole child and, uh, and help out. OK, uh, so fuzzy find. Uh, let's get started. So what, what is fuzzy find? Um, if you have used any of the modern um, editors like uh, Sublime Text or Atom, or if you use one of the useful editors like you know VI or, or Emacs, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you have probably <laughs> You have probably used Fuzzy Find, right? Fuzzy Find is used for opening files in your, in your repository or in your project. It helps you find deeply nested files by typing just a few characters that belong in the path somewhere. And you know, you, it, it somehow magically finds the file and then it opens it. So that's, that's awesome. But why should you care how it is implemented? Like, what's the purpose of all of this? Um, <clears throat> let me take you on a small journey. So it's Sunday morning, 4, 4 a.m., you're still sleeping. Some might argue that's not morning, uh, I agree. It is Sunday midnight, if you will. Uh, and you're still sleeping in bed, and suddenly your phone rings, and so apparently there's a page. You know, your production system is going down. You drag yourself up, out, out of the bed, and you open your laptop, you're groggy, you're kind of grumpy. You look at the things, and, and then, you know, uh, apparently something is wrong. But, you know, you don't panic, because Guess what? You have monitoring. So you open up New Relic, and then you look at what's going wrong. And apparently, the error rate is like all over the place. And uh, so you, know, you drill into one of the error instances, and New Relic had you know, helpfully captured a stack trace for you. There are some file names listed in the, in the stack trace, and you are now ready to, um, ready to find out where the problem is. So here we are. And um, you open up your editor. You do this, and you remember vaguely that there's something to do with plugins. So you start typing PL, you, you can't be bothered to you know, remember the entire spelling for plugins. So you're going to stop right there. And then you remember it has something to do with the plugin called process. So you type PRO, and voila. And there you go. That's the file that you're interested in. You found this file with six characters. And that path name had more than 69 characters in it. And <clears throat> You fix the problem, you release the code. In five minutes, you are now up and, up and running. The emergency is over, and you feel invincible. <laughs> and let's pause for a second there. So we started off this day thinking that it's, we're, we're kind of grumpy. The production system was going down. I would say that's the perfect recipe for a, a rotten day. But somehow we turned it around, and now you feel invincible. You can take the world. You can conquer the world. And that's, that's why Fuzzy Find is important. Because <laughs> this, this, that feature has the power to, to produce fiercely loyal users. And <clears throat> I would almost argue that that feature is worth launching 1,000 ships when the final holy editor war happens. <laughs> anyway. So now that you're up anyway, you pour yourself a cup of nice cup of coffee, and you know um, it, it's a Sunday morning. Uh, even superheroes need coffee to function. And you start to wonder how how did the fuzzy find work? Because I I am interested in implementing it on my own site because I want fierce loyal users. Um, and you think I type plu and pro, and it found this this entire um, file from my from my directory. How did it do that? So it found PLU from that red highlighted area and PRO from the other highlighted area. And it pretty much ignored everything in between. And how can we implement this? Simple, we use regular expressions. All we do is take the input and put a dot star in between every character that you find. And this should, this should technically match this, this full path. Let's give it a try, all right. OK, so first of all, we need a list of file names. Uh, we, have, we have the files that we have uh, in the project, so we're going to get started. We can use this. You, you can, we can use all the, all the file names in this project. We're going to pump it into file list. Let's make sure it is correct. 
Yes, it is exactly what we want. Okay, uh, now that we have a file list, let's fire up Node and get it started. Uh, let's read the file inside. Uh, so we need the FS module, so I'm going to require uh, FS, and let's read the file. I'm doing it synchronously. Oh, of course, I don't need buffer. I need, uh, I need to convert it into a string, as well as I need to split by the new lines, so it's nicely formatted like this. So I, I just got a list of files in a nice array that I need to try and narrow down. Okay, how can we do this? Let's see, let's put it inside a variable uh, to keep it safe, and uh, let's define our input. Let's use the same input that we, we used in Atom. So we type plu pro, and what we decided that what we decided was we were going to split on each character and put a dot star in between. So we're going to sandwich that. Let's try and emulate that. So that's how we split it, and that's how we put a dot star in between all of it. Let's make a nice regular expression out of it and save that in a variable. Okay, so now I have a list of files that I want to uh, that I want to narrow down, and I have a regular expression that is supposed to match my input. We can easily try and match this. Let's do a filter, and for each file that I have, I am going to do regular expression .exec and try to apply that regular expression on each file that I have in that list. Let's see what we get. Voila! And there it is. Now. You're, you're doing a happy dance, and you're probably you know, punching invisible angels, and you're doing all kinds of, kinds of things. And I'm sorry, what? Is that a pre-recorded video? Did you not see me typing? All right. Anyway. So this is the time when you know, your, your, your toddler decides to toddle in, and he's like, mommy. Why all the ruckus? What the heck's going on? <laughs> and so you're excited. You're like, you're, you're going to sit him down and explain to him what you did because you have to tell someone. This is a this is big achievement. And then uh, you're, you're showing him, you know, hey, I just wrote this fuzzy.js. I'm not going to type the entire thing. I have the file ready for you. Uh, <clears throat> and you tell him that, you know, hey, I wrote this fuzzy fine, and here's how this works. I read the file into the, or, or I read the file list. And I have the input, and I create a regular expression out of it. And uh, instead of using filter, you have to you know, pare down a little bit for since he's a little kid. He doesn't fully understand filter yet. <laughs> so you tell him, you know, I'm using a for loop. I go through each file, and I apply the regular expression. And if there is a match, and I add it into my suggestions, and I finally print out my suggestions. And look what it does. You show it to him, and he now high fives you. This is an awesome day, and this is, this is happening. And he says, I want to try something. I want to try something. All right. OK, so these are the different things that I have, have available. What would you like to try? And he asks, what is this? And you say, oh, that's gulp file. Gulp is a funny word, he says. <laughs> and you say, yes, yes, it is. Damn it, why didn't I think of that? All right, so let's try gulp. And so we go up there, and we type gulp. And we save that out, and we say, OK, let's try and run that. Yay, gulp file is found. But you notice that gulp file is not on the top of the list. It's actually at the bottom of the list. Your algorithm is doing what it's supposed to do. It did find g, which is in the middle, and u, which is over here, and l, which is over here, and p over here. But obviously, we're not doing any ranking of the results that are coming back, which is the most key important piece of the entire feature. So we're going to try and implement ranking into this. Let's see how we can do that. So this is where we stop thinking like computer scientists and start thinking like behavioral scientists. Because when someone starts typing to try and find a file, they're going to start by not typing one character from each portion of the file uh, path. They're going to start typing chunks of it. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is try and find the shortest chunk. So anytime there is a match, we're going to try and find that, that matching string should be the shortest. Let's see how we can do that, and, and it'll become more obvious in just a second. So we have that, and we tell, and, and you know, you, you tell your son that um, in, in JavaScript, when regular expressions are matched, it is not coming back as a true or a false. It's actually returning you an object. And this object has many attributes, and one of the attributes happens to be what was the string that actually matched in that, in that, for that regular expression. And so instead of pushing raw file names into the, into the suggestion list, you now start pushing a, uh, an a object. 
and you say, okay, the length of my match is going to be match of zero dot length. And that gives you the, the, the length for the match that you were done, or, or you just found using the regular expression. Okay, let's save that up. Uh, now that suggestions is not a string and suggestions has the information that we need, we just need to sort the suggestions list. Let's sort that. So we say suggestions dot sort and sort has this option where it can take two variables or it can take a function that allows you to define how to sort things. This is just a JavaScript raw sort function that, that allows you to do this. And it takes two values, A and B, which are the two, um, which are the two items that comes out of this. And then you can decide A dot length if it is less than b dot length, then we're going to return minus one. Whereas if a dot length is greater than b dot length, then we're going to return one. And if they are equal, we just return zero. That's good. And since suggestions is an object and we don't want to print objects out to, this, out to the world, we're just going to convert this um, into what we actually need, which is we map over it and we say item dot file. And we're good to go. Let's see if that works. Okay, should we try it? All right. Ta-da, we got Goldfall on the top. Yay, there is much applause, there is much applause because your son and you are just you know, enjoying the moment and then you know, your spouse, spouse walks in and he's like, what is all the commotion, what the, what the deuce? And then you go, <laughs> and then you go, well, we just implemented fuzzy find and and then you know your spouse asks, "Well, um, let's let's see it in action." And <laughs> and then they ask, uh, "What what's a good uh, what's a good one?" And you say, "Well, you know what you know what I'm going to show you here. Let me open this up. We were finding gulp, but let me find something you know um, kind of fancy for you. Uh, every JavaScript file or every JavaScript project has package.json." And this particular project is an electron project, so it's like nested levels of, uh, nested levels of app, and so you have multiple package.json's. So I'm going to try and find package.json, but I'm not going to type package.json here. I'm going to type some pack, pack JSO, right? And I'm going to show off, and let's save this, and let's run it, and ta-da! Well, technically speaking, that package.json should have been the first item in that list. But instead, we're seeing docs slash package.json and src slash package.json. And why is that? Because we are merely finding what is the smallest chunk. And in all three cases, the smallest chunk is exactly the same. Again, going back to behavioral science, we're going to think that when a human starts typing things, they're going to start from the beginning of a path. They're not going to start from the very end and then go backwards. So if a match happens to be in the beginning of the file path, then that should be given precedence. All right, let's implement that. That should be pretty simple. Again, um, JavaScript is pretty awesome. Um, it gives you, in this match object, another attribute that gives you wh where the match, the first match happened. So all we have to do is start, and we put the match index there. And then we come here and we say, all right, we need another level of ranking over here. And all we need to do is find out where the match index happened. Let's convert all of those into index, or start, sorry. We save that up, and we run it again. Uh, nothing changed. Let me see what I did wrong. Oh, sorry. That, uh, that should be a just match.index, not match of zero.index. My bad. OK, so now we run it. Let's see what it does. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Woo! Oh, Ta-da! All right, feeling, feeling pretty smug about it now. Yep, um, if you are not interested in actually typing all those out, those, uh, those do have a few corner cases that are actually uh, fixed and I have released it as a package. It is available on NPM. Um, uh, you're, you're welcome to use it in your project and uh, give me some feedback, um, I'd love it. Thank you, I appreciate it.